Hey, this is McCoy Buck, and I'm going to do a requested tutorial for you on how I did this 2.5D turn using only images and smart warps. Let's go back to frame zero, and I am going to bring up all of my layers. Now this character that I'm using comes with Moho. This is a character that was created by Mike Roberts. As you can see, if I go into the layers, you can see that these are just images. Most likely were created in Photoshop with the drawing tools there and then imported into Moho. So in the case of something like the arm, the arm itself is made up of two different images. You have your upper arm and your lower arm. And then the leg is actually one image. But what we did is we took that one image and we used Smart Warps, which uses 2D mesh to create that 2.5D effect. So let's go ahead and get started on how you can do that yourself. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to File, New, I'm going to go to my character library and I'm going to get that character that is created already for me. And this is the character that we're going to be using. I'm going to shrink it down so I can have it there in the window. I'm going to take all of my animation out just so when we go to frame one and we test things, things are a little bit more smoother. The next thing I'm going to do is solo out the layer that I first want to use for smart warps. So I'm going to go to the right arm and I'm gonna hit Alt, and then I'm just gonna solo out that one layer. Now there's a lot of bones and stuff that are going to be there. What you can do is you can highlight all of those bones, go back to your bone layer, and then hide all of those bones so you have a little bit cleaner of an interface. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my right upper arm. I'm gonna create a new vector layer because that's what meshes use, and I'm going to call this mesh right upper arm, okay? And then all of my mesh layers, whenever I create a mesh layer, I put it below the image that I'm going to bind that mesh to. And I'm gonna do the same for the bottom part. And I'm going to call this mesh right arm open. I try to keep it as close as I can to the uh, the original name there. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my right upper arm mesh and I'm going to with my add points tool draw out the mesh. All right, the next thing that you need to do is you need to hit U on your keyboard to create a shape. This is what's gonna let me know what I need to triangulate. So I'm gonna create the shape. And as you can see there, I have a simple fill. You don't need to have your stroke on. And then you're just gonna go here to your draw and then triangulate 2D mesh. Now that you have a mesh somewhat created, what you're going to do next is you're going to go to the right upper arm image layer, double click it, go to your image, and go to none and then attach it to the mesh upper arm. I'm gonna apply and okay. So now I have this mesh attached. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to frame one and I'm going to test it. So that works, but this doesn't. As you can see though, there's a triangle that does absolutely nothing. So what I can do is I can go back to frame zero and I can delete that because that's not actually gonna do anything for me. So I'm gonna go back to frame one and see what else is working. Okay, that's working. But even though it connects and everything, I don't have enough flexibility and I don't have enough control in order to make that arm turn like you see there. So what I need to do is I need to create a mesh for the shadow. So now I have to have points that are going to control or pull on the image of that shadow. So I'm gonna go back to frame zero and I'm with my add points tool, going to draw out those points. And then I'm going to go back to my draw, triangulate 2D mesh. And as you can see there, it's going to add more triangles to this mesh. And again, I'm going to test that out as well, see what is needed and see what is not. And as you can see there, that looks pretty good. I got a pretty good amount of flexibility for what I want to do there. I am, however, going to add a few more points just right here because I know when this arm turns, it does need a little bit more flexibility in this area. So I'm just going to add those two points right there. 
Same thing, I'm gonna to go to draw and then triangulate my 2D mesh. Go back to frame one, test that. Have a little bit more flexibility there. Perfect, that looks good. Now, the amount of points that you need, you will just have to test. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going through and I'm saying, okay, this is how many points I will need for this rotation. And you just gotta imagine how many points you need. So in this case right here, if I move that, versus that, that all is points that I need. I would actually create another point right here for this cuff, just to give it a little bit more flexibility. So I'm going to create another point and I'm going to triangulate that mesh as well. Go back to frame one and test it. There we go. So now I have pretty much all the points that I think I need at this point. So I have my points for not only the outside, but I also have it for the inside or my shadow. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the arm and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna speed this video up real quick so you can see what I'm doing. All right, and as you can see there, the arm is a little bit easier. These are the points that I gave. I'm going to be mostly moving this thumb. So I wanna give myself enough points that I need for that thumb. So the only way that I can know is to test it. So let's first make this into a shape, give it a fill, hit create shape, then I'm going to go to draw and triangulate the 2D mesh. Okay, so now all of my points are set up and that looks pretty good. That looks like the right amount of points that I need. But let's test it. And in order to do that, I'm going to connect my image layer to the mesh that I just created. So this one is called, remember it's right arm open. So I'm gonna click on right arm open and apply. Now I'm gonna go back to my mesh layer. I'm gonna go back to frame one, and now I'm gonna test this. So that looks good. Thumb looks good. And everything is good. This is a actual much more simpler one to create. As you can see here, I have this triangle up here. That's not even necessary. It's not connected to anything. So I can actually take and just delete that because the arm will be covering that part. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe a rotation for this arm. Now you can either do this inside of your action or inside of your main timeline. I have a, a shortcut that I could show you if you do it in your main timeline, just to test things out. Um, Cause I really don't do anything with my actions yet. Cause I tend to screw that up sometimes. So I'm gonna show you what I do first in my timeline. So one of the first things I'm going to do for the right upper arm is I'm going to work on that. But first I'm gonna hide those colorful triangles. So now I have a little bit of a cleaner interface there to work with. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a keyframe for all of these points on frame one. So I'm gonna highlight all the points, I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and I'm gonna hit reset. So now all those points are reset and then I'm gonna to go to frame 24. And now I'm going to imagine what this would look like if everything was rotating. So first off, the shadow is going to move. So I'm going to move the shadow over, move all those points over. The arm itself is going to move. You can see I probably needed to add some more points there because it is kind of creating an indent because when I move this main point, it's going to move the whole arm that's attached in this one large triangle. So you just want to be careful on how you do set up your points. In this case, because it's a tutorial and I just want to quickly show you how to do it, um, just know that you can add more points at any time. And then for this side of the arm, I'm going to hide some of those parts. They'll be kind of going behind the arm now because it's rotating. And then let's go ahead and let's test it out. Let's just see what we got so far. Okay, so as you can see, that's very simple, especially when you have a shadow, it's very simple to create a 2.5D effect. Okay, as you can see down here on the sleeve, it's kind of pulling a little bit. So what I do is I use the control shift D to jump back to my main reference, back to the shape. So that really helps me. And then you can either keep your points on or off, turn my points back on, and I'm just going to move that in just a little bit. Okay, and just go back, back and forth there. I'm not doing too big of a turn because as you know, it's it's basically stretching the image itself. So if I did want to go wider, I could. I just have to be aware of all the points and everything else that I'm dragging with it. 
Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same for the hand. I'm going to turn off those colorful triangles, go to frame one, take all of my points and create a keyframe, and then go to frame 24. And then basically I'm just going to be moving this thumb. So I'm going to move in all of these points right here. So I'm just going to take and grab those. And as you can see, it's changing the whole shape of the arm, but that's okay. I'm just going to fix that by doing that. And I should get some of a rotation. So as you can see, there's kind of a rotation right there. I'm going to change the shape up just a little bit. So it looks like it is actually rotating. So I'm going to make this part just a little bit flatter just so you can kind of get a, a, a 2.5D rotation there. Now, as you can see, it does look flat because I'm not changing the shape of the thumb, so I am going to do that. And there you go, nothing too complex there. Pretty simple stuff, you're just moving points around. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to combine both of these movements together with a smart bone dial. So. One of the things you gotta do is you gotta go back to your main layer, make sure you're on frame zero, you're gonna create a smart bone. I'm not gonna give this a name or anything, but I am gonna take the strength off of it and I'm going to use the smart bone dial tool and just leave it at that same name. And I want to give it an angle of, I think this is zero. I don't know, I can never remember, but I want the, the angle of this bone, I want it to move to the left, so I think that's how that's done. And then I'm gonna leave it at a duration of 24 frames because that's all I gave myself of the second uh, to do that action. Yep, and that's correct. And for some reason it creates them as linear. You can have these as smooth. It really just depends on your preference of what you want your interpolation to be. And then what I'm going to do next, I'm gonna to go to my actions window and I'm going to click on the main line once and then selecting the mesh arm open layer, so the layer that I had created that animation with, I'm going to insert a copy or I'm going to insert those keyframes that I created into the mesh arm open smart bone. So remember, double click, make sure you're on your smart bone dial and then just click once on your main line and you're gonna get that new pop-up to insert the copy. And so now you can see there, that is inserted and it's gonna be the hand down here. And then I'm gonna do the same for the upper arm. Just click on the main line once, insert the copy, great. So I'm gonna go back to my main line and I'm going to go to both of those. And as you can see there, with the cool new feature with Moho Pro 12, I can see both my timelines and I'm just gonna delete them. So now they're going to be inside of my smart bone. However, watch what happens when I try and test this on frame zero, nothing. Remember, smart warps only function and you are able to test them on frame one. So I'm gonna to go to frame one and there you go. That is how you create a 2.5D effect with smart bones and Moho Pro 12. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you wanna know more about rigging and how to rig effectively, definitely check out my course in the description below. I'll see you later.